Now, in this video of HTML, we will discuss about one of the very important tags in HTML that is tables. As the name said, table means it will be the tableau format comprising rows and columns inside it. So basically the main use of tables in classic HTML is to arrange the layout of your web page. So using the tables and you can even nest a table inside a table, you can actually design a structure or a layout of your web page like what all you want to put on the top like logo or any tagline name of your organization after that in what way you want to put the content like some links then some image or whatever you want to put so using the different tags related to table and the different attributes related to table you can actually structure your web page so let's see a practical implementation of what all we have in your table tag in HTML. So let's start with a very basic example of table. So in this particular example, what I have done is, uh, first of all, I put a table tag followed by the border where I put the value one. So basically we have already seen the border attribute in images where it was basically an outline around the image. So here it will do the same thing with the table. Now, in this particular table, I want to use a couple of rows and in each row, I want two columns. So to do that, what I have done, first of all, I have added one TR for inside that we have put two TDs. All right, like first TD inside this, I have put row one, column one, another TD in which row one, column two. So in the same row, it will be two columns. Once we are done with this, we will add another TR followed by two TDs inside as we have already done here. So let's save this and come to the browser for the output. So here you can see this is the row one, column one, row one, column two. And again in the another row, row two, column one, row two, column two. All right. If you want, you can add another row with this very same manner. All right like one more TR, I'm not changing the text. So if I'll come, you can see one more row out there. By default, the width of the table and the cells depend on the content which you are putting inside. If you want to change the width, you can actually give it a value like width is equal to 500 pixels. All right. So now it will be taking that particular size. Along with that, you can observe like this text is actually getting started from the very, I uh, means it's just connected to the borders or the edges. All right. If you want the, to give some space between the text and the corners, you can actually use the attribute called cell padding. All right. So in cell padding, if you give any value, let's say five. So basically there will be some distance. And now you can see there is some gap between the text and the edges of this cell. Similarly, if you want to give some space between the two cells, you can use another attribute called cell spacing. So in cell spacing, if I'll give any value, let's say five again. So now the difference between the cell will be increased. So these are the some common attributes of the table. That is the cell spacing, cell padding, width and border. Now, let's give some heading to each column of the table so for doing that if you want to show some data inside a table in a table format so you can also give it a heading and for doing the that particular thing what you can do you will have to add another row that is tr since it is heading it should be in the top of the table all right and now inside this we have put a couple of headings that is the tabular table heading. This is table data and this is table heading inside a table row. All right. So now since the first column is containing the name, I'll put a name followed by the salary. All right. So let's put any value. So there are some data which I have entered. All right. Let's come to the browser and refresh. And now here you can see there is name salary which is the heading automatically they are centered alignment and they are bold and followed by the three records where each column is containing a name and salary 
So these are the things which you can use for displaying a data in a tabular format. But you can also do a lot of more things inside a table. Let's say if you want to merge two rows and or two columns or maybe more than two or columns. So you can use the options called call span and row span. Call span to merge the columns while row span is to merge the rows. So for that, I will again use the initial table which we use for the uh, introduction of the table reference. All right, let me add one more row out here. So that will be row three, column one, column two. All right, so and let's add one more actually column in all these three. So three rows and three columns. So column one, column two, column three. Let me do this in all the TRs. So now this one is done. Let's see the output now. So this is how it is looking like. So let's say I want to merge these two columns now. All right. What I want to do is I want to merge row one, column two and row one, column three. So for that, what I'll have to do, I will have to make changes in this particular column. That is row one, column two. So let's come here in row one, column two. And here what I'll do, since I want to merge two columns, I will use call span. And how many columns I want to merge? This one and two. So I'll say call span is equal to two. So basically after that, this will be merged to this column. So I will have to remove this column because the only column means this row one column two is taking the space of two columns. It is merging two columns as a single. So I will remove this row one column three. So let's refresh and see this particular column is taking the space of two columns in this particular fashion. Similarly, if I want to merge row one column two to row two column one, sorry, row one column one to row two column one, I can do that as well. So since here I was using call span, here I'm merging two rows, so it will be row span. So again, I will start the things from here because this is the first cell in the list. Remember when I was merging these two columns, so this was the starting cell. When I'm merging these two rows, again, this is the starting cell. So I will make the changes only in the starting cell. So let's come to row one, column one, where I will use row span. And in this row span, how many rows I'm going to merge? Since I don't have any bigger table, so I'm just merging two and two rows and columns. You can create a bigger table and you can merge more than two rows and columns. So here, what I have done is there is row span two. So what it will do, it will be merged from th this and this. So basically what I'll have to do, I will have to remove this row two column one. So let's come here and remove this row two column one, save this and come to the browser. And here you can see these two cells have been merged. So let's Add one more thing here. This is how, as we now learned, this is how we can start merging the rows and columns. Now, I can also add a caption out here. This is merging cells example. So whenever you want to put a caption to your table, right after the table tag, before the cells, before any row, we should add the caption. So as similarly, we ha I have done here. So let's come here and see this is the caption, all right? So this is merging cells example. Similarly, if you want to change the color of your table, you can use the BG color attribute, all right? So here in the BG color, what I'll do, I'll use a color tan. Let's come here and refresh. You can see the background of the color is changed to tan. Similarly, if you want to put any background image, you can do that. I don't have currently any uh, proper background image, so but if you want, you can do using the background attribute, I can pass any image. So let's add the image called logo.png, which I used for the images example also, which is nothing but a tutorials point logo. All right, it's not image, it's images. So let's come to the browser again. 
and let's refresh so here you can see the image is being added as a background as I said you should go for a valid background image which will give a pleasant output to your tables similarly if you want to add the header or footer to for your table you can do that as well with the tags called t head and t foot so what is that this is basically the head of the table this is the footer of the table all right so it is call span 4 but i think i don't have so much calls so i'll just use call span 3 here because we just have three cells maximum in our table all right in a row so let's come here and refresh but first let me remove this image that is quite disturbing here so let's remove it here all right so here you can see this is the header this is the footer though i added this t foot at the top but since it was t foot it will anyhow go at the bottom all right so these are the different attributes and different tags inside a table which you can use for designing a table and as i said in the description you can use the nested table in order to make the designing of your web pages